Oh, mama. It's review day. Whew. I'm excited. This is the brand new, hot off the press, Traeger Timberline XL. I had to go buy this at a retail store. I couldn't even get my hands on one from the dealer, from Traeger. Paid full price, just for you guys at home. That way we can get an authentic review on this. Let's roll. All right, first thing you're gonna notice is the packaging. So, having so many grills in and out of the showroom for years and years, just by looking at it, I'm gonna go ahead and deduce that it's mostly assembled, which is huge. I don't know about you, Chris, but I don't like putting grills together, do you? No. no. Packaging is super cool on it too. Don't you think? Here's the deal. When they launched this on the 30th, uh, a ton of influencers posted videos that day. What does that mean? It means that they collaborated with Traeger, which doesn't mean it's like a paid advertisement or anything. They're probably free to speak their mind. But what happens is when they do a launch, uh, not just Traeger, a lot of brands, when they launch a new product, they'll collaborate with influencers and send them a product before it launches. Let them unbox it, do their review, that way when it launches, they can just flood the market with, uh, with reviews to help get the name out there. It's smart, it's really smart. I, unfortunately, was not included in that. I'm not a big deal, not to Traeger. Uh, that's not a bad thing or anything. I'm just saying, this is, not that those other reviews aren't authentic and they'll tell you if they're paid promos. Um, and I'm sure they're great reviews but this is as authentic as it gets. I paid full price at the hardware store for this. Oh, that's how you do it. You just flip them out. I just figured it out. So I kind of feel like I'm gonna give you guys as an authentic review as possible. Um, and this is the reason why I probably wasn't included. Traeger, a lot like Weber, is high volume. They're a public, publicly traded company. They're super high volume. They sell a ton of products and what they do, and this is where I think, this is just my opinion, where I think they have their business model a little bit backwards, is their highest volume dealers get this specialty grill. So this is a grill you probably won't see in Costco and things like that. Um, maybe you will, I don't know. But all the high end dealers get these grills. Problem is, is all the high, or, or all the high volume dealers usually aren't specialty barbecue shops. Like we're a specialty barbecue shop and a $4,000 grill is like right up our alley. Chris, how many $4,000 grills do we sell? A lot. Tons, tons. And the problem is we don't sell that many $799 smokers because that's just not the clients we have coming in here. Customers come into a specialty barbecue shop because they're looking for something a little bit nicer than the big box stores. The way we say it is right where the big box stores leave off is where we start. So the highest end at big box, then you come to us and you can see everything from thousand bucks up to 10, 11 grand. This grill is our wheelhouse. It would fit perfectly in our showroom. But as of right now, I think we're gonna get it, but we weren't included in the initial launch because we're just not a high volume enough dealer. That's my little pitch while I open this. That's my little spiel. So me just being a little personally irked about it, but hey, I get it. That has nothing to do with the grill review, by the way, other than I'm gonna give you guys as an authentic review as possible. You can't fault the packaging. How cool is this packaging? Oh, look at that. The inside is printed too. What does it say? Come in. Kind of looks like a saloon, huh? Look at this thing. This thing is a beast. I'll confess, I don't know a lot about this grill. Outside of the fact that I know it has an awesome electric side burner, which I'm hoping gets hot enough to sear. I feel like that's kind of the point of it. And a new touchscreen control. Okay, so here's our hopper. This is our 
pellet sensor. So that's gonna tell us how full our pellets are. Before I start putting it together, I just wanna get a good look at her. And I think we get some nice little storage shelves down here. And then I think there's a rail system here. Oh, here we go. Here's all our goodies. We got storage under here. Let's see if I can get under the hood at all. Works with Alexa and Google Home. We're gonna have to try that out. Oh, mama. Here's our cooking box. Interior line stainless steel. Looks like we have a bunch of adjustable racking systems in here. This maybe looks like our side burner, so we're gonna have a little bit of assembly, but at least the cart's assembled. I forgot to mention, really the only way to put this to the test is obviously to cook on it. So you better believe we're gonna put this to the test and we're gonna cook on it in this video. Okay, so here's like our drip pan. I think that's our grease tray. It feeds down into there. Here's our burn pot. There's our igni ignition system. So here's our actual firebox. Pretty cool looking. Looks like enamel interior. All right, should we get this thing put together, man? Yeah. All right, let's finish put it together. Then we're gonna fire it up. I'm curious what this control system looks like, what the side burner looks like. And the side burner gets as hot as they, as they claim it's gonna get. We're gonna have to reverse sear probably a tomahawk or something. Should we get going? Yeah. Let's do it. All right, we got this beast put together. Like I said, if you couldn't tell when I was unboxing it, my feelings were a little hurt. It wasn't included with the launch of this thing. But anyways, the only reason I just said that is I actually don't know a lot about this. So we're gonna learn together. Um, <clears throat> hard, let's talk about hardware. Then we'll get into uh, hardware upgrades. Then we'll get into software upgrades. And of course, we're gonna actually cook on this. So I'm excited to fire it up and play with it. Um, you can see it's really kind of stuck true to the roots of Traeger and true to the roots of the original Timberline. Like a lot of the aesthetics are similar. Obviously Traeger's kind of known for their powder coat finish. Uh, nice clean lines, doesn't have a huge Traeger logo right here, just kind of a small one here. They sort of matted out or matte blacked out this handle. Almost looks like black stainless. It's pretty cool. Bamboo cutting board, true to the original Timberline. This is the 1300 or the XL, I guess they call it. The reason I was saying 1300 is cooking size is about the same, but you can see what is nice is we got a lot more vertical space in the grill. So the original Timberline, I personally cooked on the Timberline for three or four years I had one, 1300. I loved it, it was an awesome machine. But it would get snug with the second and third row of racks in. So personally, I like how we've gained more vertical space. And this is, I think, a big deal that we have all these adjustments. So if you wanna just put in two and evenly space them out, or if you wanna you know, make them a little snugger, more, more snug, I guess you could say. And then this is different too. These are a little more modular these heavy duty stainless grates, which I like because the other ones were so heavy and big. So it's, this is kind of the best of both worlds because they're heavy and thick, but they're more modular. So they're not a huge pain in the butt to move around, especially if you got to get to this burn pot or anything like that. We kind of showed you that when we're putting it together, but essentially one of the upgrades you're going to get is your ash clean out and your grease tray clean out is all right here. So that's pretty simple and straightforward. Only time will tell if it actually, I'm assuming it's gonna do its job, but you know, funnel down a little bit easier. These doors are soft close. Now you'll notice, oh, I forgot to mention, rocking the Air Jordan 3 Cardinal Reds. Not a Cardinal fan, but hard to pass these up. Pretty sweet. <clears throat> you notice too, we have our induction side burner. One of the biggest complaints we get with customers who are Traeger and a lot of pellet smokers in general is they don't get hot enough. So we're gonna put this to the test and see if it can actually get hot enough to sear. It's induction cooking. So um, I'm assuming it's going to, but most of the induction cooktops I've seen are 220. This is just a regular plug-in, so we'll see how powerful it is and uh, hopefully it does the job. But to me, this is the biggest upgrade on the grill, personally. Um, the fact that we 
have a cooker or a smoker as an all-in-one with the ability to sear without bringing gas in, without bringing up a separate, separate propane skillet top or something like that. You basically have a station that can do everything and that's what we're gonna test out. We're gonna reverse sear a tomahawk. So we're gonna try that out and see what we think of it. Uh, the rail system. This is a unique rail system and it's really designed and integrated for um, all their fun accessories. So they have accessories like this, for example, which we just haven't put on yet. Stuff like front shelves, hanging hooks. I'm sure they're gonna be coming out with even more accessories, you know, condiment trays. It's just gonna attach here. So always be fun little goodies, paper towel racks, things like that, I'm guessing. And I'm sure they're just gonna keep expanding those accessory features, which is pretty cool because it kind of future proofs the grill a little bit. The other thing we notice with the hardware is nice, sharp, clean lines. Now, this is so, what's cool is this can be integrated or built in. So this side burner can detach, and then this side burner can be more like an insert in an outdoor kitchen. And then the rest of this thing can literally just slide into your outdoor kitchen, which is super cool because obviously Traeger has really nothing to the market that is really designed for an outdoor kitchen. Um, my only hesitation, I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know what I think about it, but it's still not like a true, you know, like a real actual built-in head, like an outdoor kitchen. You know, this is a gas grill. Man, it's a mess over here, but something like this, you know, Twin Eagles, Coyote, Memphis, they make a true built-in stainless steel grill head. It's not that, and part of me is bummed about that, but then the other part of me is like, just stick to what you're good at. Traeger's good at this look. They're good at this design. It's the design people know and love. And they sort of have stuck with that. Like I said, it, the roots of it look a lot like the original Timberline. Uh, tell me what you guys think. I can't decide. I'm on the fence about it. I'm kind of bummed that they don't have a true stainless, like authentic built-in head. Maybe they're coming out with one. I don't know. But this is at least, at least what you can do with this is I think it's on the right track. You can do this and have it built into an outdoor kitchen because when you try to build in a pro or something, it just looks kind of stupid, you know, kind of framing around it. It doesn't look good. This is gonna look good and it's gonna look like it's meant to be built around with the outdoor kitchen, which is a big upgrade, I think. We're gonna talk about the control system. The control system is touchscreen and colored. When we fire it up, of course, we're gonna go through that. We'll go through the app system, connecting it, all that, but we'll save that for when we get outside. Last little thing on hardware. It does have the downdraft system. That's the same, same D2 controller uh, that's in the old one. And then here we have our bamboo sort of shelves, which of course is super handy. I don't think you can ever have enough storage. And then I'm pretty sure, here we go. Okay, yeah, I found it. I thought that's what this is. So this is a hopper clean out. So what a hopper clean out does, let's see if we can see it from inside here. Oh yeah, so see right here? This is handy because, is it working? There we go. Nice. So see that? This is for if we wanna change the flavor of our pellets, we can. So we just open that up, all the pellets dump out of it, then we can refill it with a new flavor. And this, Oh boy, what have I done? Busted it already. This is a pellet storage bin, which is pretty cool. Let's see if I can fix it quick. There we go. So this pellet storage bin comes with your grill. Sits right there. Boom, easy. That's a big upgrade. The other one, you kind of would have to hold a bucket up to it, make a huge mess. So you can see they've definitely refined this grill. It's cleaner, the ash clean out's simpler, easier to use. Cleaning out your pellets is simpler, easy to use. It's got a cleaner, sleeker design, in my opinion. Um, we gain more space in our cooker itself, even though it's the same amount of square inches. To me, this is a bigger grill because we have more vertical space within the grill. And this induction cooktop, I think is a game changer. 
I think it's the best feature they came out with on this grill. But now, we gotta put our money where our mouth is and actually see if that's the best feature. Should we go fire this thing up? Let's see what it can do. Let's do it. I almost forgot one of the most cool, the coolest things in my opinion. So it comes with, the uh, looks like a couple wired meat probes, which is typical with the Traeger, but here's what's really cool. Traeger bought out Meter, a company called Meter, which is wireless meat probes. I think they make the best meat probes on the market. They're expensive. They're like 100 bucks for a one pack, then 300 bucks for a four pack meter block. But they are hands down the best meat probes on planet Earth, in my opinion. Guess what they do with the Timberline XL? Boom. That was a pleasant surprise. I didn't know that was gonna be in here. We get two meters. And to me, that's like a free 200 bucks they're giving you. So let's check it out. That's like a $200 value in this grill. I mean, you are dropping almost four grand. Oh boy, what have I done? Oh, these are my meat probe clips. So we get our two meat probes. Now the way the normal meter block works is the block, this is what actually charges your meat probes. So I bet you there's a battery pack in here. Oh yeah, there you go. So this actually keeps your meat probes charged and then when they're out of here, this is how they sync to Bluetooth. Now they give you two of these and they are a hundred bucks, but when you buy them, the standalone models, you get a much nicer like wood grain block. This is plastic, not, not the end of the world, but the other one is a lot more attractive and you can like set it on your kitchen counter. Here's what you do. You get the nice attractive one for indoors and then use this one for outdoor barbecuing. That's just my two cents. But this is really cool that they gave you these. And we're gonna use these on, the, on our cook today. So far, I'm really happy with this grill. It would definitely go in my top five, but now we have to cook on it to see if it's actually gonna hold up. All right, with tomahawks, I don't like to get cute with it. You know, you don't wanna screw up a cut of meat like this. I mean, look at this thing. <laughs> How awesome is that? One of my favorite, most fun cuts to do. And really, I think the only way to do a tomahawk is reverse searing it. That's why I thought it'd be a perfect test for this Traeger. So I just like to do a binder. I'm using olive oil. I like olive oil because olive oil gives you a nice, when you go to reverse sear it, gives you a really nice, like crispy, little crunch to it. And tomahawks are so thick that gotta get all the sides and edges on everything. Oh yeah. And then, I don't like to get cute with my seasoning either. I just like to use my favorite seasoning. We'll include links for all this stuff too. SPG, it's basically salt, pepper, garlic, and a little bit of cane sugar. I don't like sweet, a lot of sweet with my steaks. And then be again, because our cut is so thick, I don't think you can really over season the tomahawk because it's hard to get that flavor down into the middle of that meat. All right, she's nice and seasoned. <laughs> that pepper gets me sometimes. Also, side note, our kitchen, we're building a nice big kitchen here. So we're not gonna be back here like animals working. Um, it is gonna be awesome. It's almost done. All right, she's nice and seasoned. She's gonna be ready to go on. So let's go fire up that grill, get the app sync to it. Let it let that paint cure in a little bit on a new grill. Then we'll be ready to cook. All right, took a minute. Those stinkers, they like to hide the power button. So there's a master power button down here. We check this out. We got some side lighting too. That's sweet. Look at that. That doesn't hurt. All right, so I'm logged in on our Traeger app here. So let's control the grill. So we have to season the grill, which we know. Connect our grill. Explore your grill. We don't need to know how to do that. Tour guide, no, I don't need that. Connect your grill. Start pairing. Yeah, I like that this is touchscreen. To me, that's much better because now everyone uses touchscreen. It's, it's just the most intuitive way to control something. So it's nice that they've done that versus having to use the dial for everything. So this is much improved. So now we're just gonna let this season for an hour 
and then uh, we'll get going here. Let's get it in here. Oh, oh mama. Oof. So I'm gonna put it on the second rack so it doesn't get too hot. And then I'm still letting my meter probes charge, but we'll sink the meter probe here. And in the meantime, while this is smoking, let's test out this induction, see how it works. All right, so I'm just curious how long this is gonna take. This looks pretty straightforward. There's a Bluetooth button I have to figure out what that does. But uh, we're gonna put it in turbo mode. I can hear something happening but I'm curious how fast and how hot this is gonna get. Oh, oh man, that cast iron's hot. Look at this, Two, 206, 215. Holy cow, look at that. It's been on not even a minute. I'm curious, I have it in turbo mode, so I'm curious how hot it's gonna get. All right, I just shut this off, but we hit 650 degrees in like a minute and a half. That's pretty awesome. I love that they stuck with this whole grill being electric. Obviously that's sort of their origin. It would have been a pain to like have to bring in a propane tank for your side burner or something like that. This induction cook cooktop, including it in this grill is genius. I love it. I'm in love. All right, let's see if we can get our meat probe connected. So we're gonna go meat probe one. We're gonna hit our menu. We're going to go down to accessories and we're going to go pair BT probe. It's searching for this guy. It should have enough juice. Okay. So view our device. We're going to set our goal alarm. So essentially what I'm going to do is I want this thing to alert me when our internal temp reaches 110 degrees because that's when it's time to reverse here. I love, I love, I cannot say it enough that the meter wireless technology is integrated into the app. That makes it so awesome. All right, I'm gonna go right in the middle. So now we got our wireless meat probe in. We got our induction cooktop ready. Got our meat probe, which is only at 73 degrees. We've been in super smoke mode to, get, to really get that smoke flavor in for probably 30, 45 minutes. I don't think we need to stay in super smoke mode. So I'm gonna crank it up a little bit. It's been smoking at 225. I think we're gonna go 275. Let's do 280, what the heck. All right, super smoke is off. Now it's gonna go to 280. Our meat probe is in. And then let's see, it's picking up our meat probe here too. Okay, this is what's so sweet. It tells us what our batteries are at on our meat probe. Current temp, 160. Our goal is 110. 70% remaining on our, on our pellets. Tells us how full our, how full our fuel is. Our side burner's connected. Man. This thing's awesome. All right, so we hit our temp control. So the first thing we gotta do is get our induction cooker going. A Little bit of butter, and we're about ready to rock and roll here. Look at that. Oh yeah. All right, let's go for it. You ready, Chris? Yep. Do or die time. Look at that. While that's going, I'm just gonna be based in this. That's a sear, all right. Get in there, close up of it burning, Chris. First thing we gotta do is get this meter out of here. There's our meat probe. Oh my goodness. I can tell this thing, look at that. I can tell this thing did a good job searing. Oh yeah. 
Oh yeah. Somebody's, somebody's, Tate's dog's probably gonna want that. Oh my, oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? I always like to cut this off. And then cut it down the middle where our nice medium rares are. I almost finished medium, huh? Yeah, Look at that. Good. Man, it's still piping hot. All right, let's try it. Oh. Mm. Mm. You guys don't even know. You don't even know how good that is. Obviously the Traeger got a lot of smoke in there. That nice crispy crust from the sear. Oh man. Guys, I gotta say, because my feelings were a little hurt, like I said earlier, I almost didn't want to like the thing. I love it. It is awesome. I would definitely get one going, but it can do the job. I mean, it can do what no Traeger's ever done before, I'll tell you that much. I'm in love. Stay tuned for next time.